Let me be pretty brief. I can say a lot about Gu Jun because I, I know her quite well. But um, she graduated from the Beijing Film Academy in 1991, and she now teaches documentary film at the Beijing Film Academy, which is in Beijing. And um, this film we're watching tonight, she's done, she did a lot of very interesting work for Chinese Central Television, including for those who know Chinese film, a biography, a film bi biography of Gu Yo, a leading Chinese actor, and for CCTV. This was her Dreamweavers, whereas um, her first feature length, I believe, documentary a film. Um, and it's been extremely well received. She can give you more details on, on uh, anything from the cameras she used, which are totally a little too technical for me to talk about tonight, um, or the way she raised the funding for this film uh, from different sources. It's not easy to make documentary films in China. Um, and this is not an official government film, although, interestingly enough, this was the film that China put in for the Academy Award for Best Foreign Language Film last year. It was the only documentary <coughs> film. All of the other entrants from all the different countries in the world, by 65 entrants, uh, were all feature films. This was the only documentary. This was the official Chinese entry uh, for the Academy Award Best Foreign Language Film. So it shows you how well received it was. Um, it's won a number of awards um, in uh, Newport Beach, Documentary Film Festival, uh, Best Film. I remember having dinner with Gu Jun after that, and when she was here for that. Um, it's won awards in Milan, Italy recently uh, as Best Documentary, but in Montreal, uh, and if I'm wrong, Maybe you can correct me about that, because I sometimes, uh, I think Montreal is probably Everlasting Flame, though, right? Yeah. yeah. So I'm a little off on that, because her second film, which is actually an official film of the International Olympic Committee called Everlasting Flame, um, and she can talk a little bit about that as well, uh, where she went all around the world interviewing people like Usain Bolt and his family. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, there uh, it took three years to make that. It took seven years to make the film you're going to see tonight. And with Everlasting Flame, she had 400 hours, I think, 400 hours of film, which was cut down into a very much shorter version. And the film tonight, I think, was 70 hours of footage which, that she cut down um, into, into a shorter version. But Everlasting Flame, uh, I think, won at Montreal and, and Milan. But I think this one also won something at Milan, didn't it? Uh, Dreamweavers. Uh, uh, Dreamweavers uh, and, and not in Montreal. But in Milan, right? Ma uh, Both films won in Milan, no? Uh, Milan, Milan, yeah, Milan, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. okay. Um, so, I mean, there's a lot more uh, I can say. I'm not sure I need to say too much more. I think the only other thing I'll say is, is that uh, if you read the Chinese uh, film journals like I try to do, like uh, Dong Dai Dian in contemporary cinema. I haven't just noticed the other day because I was looking for something else. In the July 2008 issue, there's a, well, there's a whole section on sports documentaries in China. And, and there's a nice article on this film with an interview uh, with, with Gu Jun about this film you're going to see tonight. And the most recent issue that came out um, has another interview with her, uh, November uh, or December issue this year it just came out, so I don't have it yet. But uh, so she's quite uh, prominent in, in in China. So I think we're very fortunate to have her here. So thank you on behalf of your Good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, uh, thank you for your coming uh, to watch my film. Um, I just make a short uh, intro uh, introduction about the, this movie. Uh, why China was chosen to host the 2008 Olympic? Uh, on the one hand, uh, an international event of such extent can boost the Im image of the country, bring more international uh, fluence and forge better understanding between China and outside world. And uh, on another hand, the International Olympic Committee 
uh, so um, hosting the Olympics in the most populous uh, na nation as a great opportunity to promote the Olympic movement. The nation's um, uh, vast uh, resource and stress in its uh, preparation also brought a satisfaction to committee. Uh, uh, hey, um, so in 2001, China was awarded the rights to host the, their first Olympic uh, Games. Uh, for the local Chinese who had gone through nearly uh, 20 years of social uh, reforms and opening up, uh, they now have a better standard of living and, uh, and uh, more self self confidence. Uh, so I use such a background to open my case for investigation, uh, raising questions such as how will China host an uh, event that the world will focus on? What will the secret behind Olympic venues, design and construction? What do Chinese people and athletes really think of the Olympic Games? Uh, from 2001 to 2008, uh, I uh, got uh, 17 hours footage uh, and made this movie. Uh, Dreamweavers uh, attempt to uh, give audience these answers. So this film is indoors officially, officially that, uh, but uh, from the beginning to the end, uh, were independent thought and creative by myself. This film, uh, based on true accounts and not changed by any government officials. So uh, this documentary is my personal view of Beijing 2008 uh, Olympic uh, preparation. Um, so I hope you enjoy this movie. raise money, particularly uh, in China for documentaries, uh, because most of the documentaries, they're either underground documentaries or they're documentaries that are made for, let's say, propaganda or political purposes. So do independent documentaries, which are not kind of very critical uh, and not necessarily completely done for the purpose of, let's say, propaganda or politics, it's hard to find people who will fund that. So maybe you can say something about, this is not, this is not an official film. Your mm -hmm. second film was an official film for the International Olympic Committee because they like this yeah. one so much. Yeah. But maybe you can talk about how you raise the money for this film. For this film? Yeah. <laughs> it's very complicated. I work in a, a China newsreel and documentary film studio. Uh, uh, actually, uh, this is uh, their project. The, the, the first money <laughs> comes uh, 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 China Newsreel. And, uh, uh, but uh, very little, uh, uh, 15,000 RMB. Some people, uh, they respect documentary, actually. <laughs> so give me some money. Uh, uh, totally, it's uh, ten thousand RMB. Ten thousand. Okay. Yeah. These are entrepreneurs. I mean, yeah. people. Uh, Chia Jia. Uh, Chia Jia. Yeah. yeah. Kind of entrepreneurs. Okay, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. The third way is um, I help the Bocock to yeah, the Beijing Olympic Organizing Committee. Yeah, to make uh, made another movie. And the same money, <laughs> yeah, put the money uh, to this movie, the, the, yeah. the second, the third way. Uh, after uh, 
uh, six years, uh, another uh, company, uh, they uh, um, watch the material and uh, make decisions, uh, give me some money and finish this film. Um, uh, I think uh, for the Olympic game, uh, three things is very important. Uh, venue, uh, uh, athlete, and security. So uh, at the beginning, I just looking for uh, the, I focused the, the, the national stadium it, because that is a big project. And uh, uh, for the athletes, I, uh, um, <coughs> Uh, Why well, I I, um, I uh, choose the 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 gymnastics because uh, they training uh, uh, very early. Um, yeah, at uh, two thousand three, uh, they have a yeah. They looking for the the, the young uh, gymnastics and uh, selected them to the the national uh, team. So that uh, uh, another reason is uh, for the Olympic team, only uh, six people, only six people. And uh, in uh, 2003, I, uh, um, uh, when I go to, uh, when, when I went to the national uh, uh, gymnastic uh, team, I, I, uh, I, uh, uh, I found uh, many uh, young people come there. Uh, uh, almost a uh, uh, hundred uh, people. And after uh, uh, um, uh, five or six years training, they only have uh, uh, six people join the Olympic game. So that, that is really hard for them. So. Uh, the, for the family, uh, because the, they build the, the national stadium, uh, the, the, the people have to relocate, uh, have to uh, relocate it. So I uh, choose one family. But for this family, uh, yeah, I um, uh, didn't, uh, uh, didn't, uh, uh, choose uh, uh, the uh, um, refuge uh, remove because they only have uh, uh, one. Uh, I uh, uh, investigate uh, almost hundred people, and uh, ten percent is refuge, and ten percent is have uh, government connected. So I only choose the in the middle. Uh, and uh, uh, the, I choose from the um, eight percent uh, people, and choose uh, the Grandma Gao. I, I I think uh, this family is a typical family. After uh, uh, two thousand four Athens Olympic game, uh, I think Liu Xiang is a very important athletes in uh, uh, this, his, uh, this period is very important because uh, for the um, 100, uh, uh, 100 time uh, hurdle uh, is, uh, for China is uh, not uh, strong. So he made the, the history. So I, I think he's very important. This is a bit from the uh, Chinese views. Uh, Studio. Studio. Yeah. And will there be any limitation or will there be any, will they ask you to do it like, like what kind of film or some kind of limitation? Uh, no, uh, they have no any idea because uh, that is a uh, long time. And if, um, yeah, they, they, yeah, they, 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 so you can, you can uh, you yeah. Uh, they can know uh, uh, what happened yeah, uh, tomorrow, so that is the reason why they can control.
There's another reason, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, this film took seven years to make, and in the newsreel studio, the maximum time for a project is four years. So this went beyond the maximum time. So they basically didn't really know what was going on. Once they gave, and they didn't give a whole lot of money. I was surprised to see that they were told about allowing you to film their uh, preparation for the uh, security. Usually it's confidential. Was there any restriction on the filming? I'm not going to tell you that. I'm not going to There are certain things maybe they wouldn't let her see, but that, she was filming just the SWAT team, so they let her see that. And maybe they wanted to do that because it was a deterrence to terrorists. The second movie is just about the uh, uh, Olympic game athletes mm -hmm. and not about the National Stadium and, uh, and the other things. Why is there this documentary at April? Why don't you get in at the opening ceremony or other kind of time? Why do you end at that time? After that, I have uh, the, the, the second movie. <laughs> yeah. so the movie began from the, uh, the end of March. 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 But actually, the National Stadium is um, finished, uh, uh, including uh, testing. Uh, they finish, they are totally finished. <coughs> they, they will uh, welcome the athletes come here. So, yeah, everything is finished. Construction. From the perspective of outside China, uh, there was a lot of focus on the workers uh, preparing for the Olympics, many of whom were required to leave Beijing in advance of the Olympics. And so there was some, some outside China might ask, what about the people who actually built these venues? What about the people who built the subways and prepared for the games? Uh, in this film, we have the architects, we have the leaders, we have those people, but we don't have those who made it possible for all of this to happen. Mm, I think uh, for the Olympic game, uh, yeah, many things uh, need uh, prepare. <laughs> I just uh, um, select, uh, selected the, the typical uh, people and the things to show. Uh, so uh, I, uh, I say uh, three things is very important, venue, uh, athlete, and security. Because the, so I just show <laughs> this three. Uh,
it's really a good movie. I think uh, you know it shoot from different view, and um, I think you know the film stuff here is just a fantastic, it's terrific, because we for all of the people for the outside world they didn't know the proper preparation yeah. work of the Olympic Games. But uh, after you know uh, the past events, I mean, and the. Uh, April of the 2008, you know, the past events, the opening ceremony, and all the, uh, you know, uh, competitions in the, during the Beijing Games. Everybody knows that because, because we can see it from the right. TV. So I think uh, the stops here just, uh, you know, fantastic. So I didn't have worry against that gentleman said. Uh, and about the immigrant workers, about the immigrant workers, you know. Uh, actually, they have paid a lot of work effort on that venue, and uh, some of them are invited, were invited to see the opening ceremony. Uh, uh, you know, before the opening ceremony, they have three, uh, maybe, uh, uh, I don't know, it's called the rehearsals for the opening right. ceremony. So we have three before, the, uh, before that. So yeah. some of the workers, uh, immigrant workers, you know, have, were invited for, to uh, watch the whole opening ceremony. And uh, you know, some of them actually uh, during the Olympic Games they were, uh, you know, they left home because they are just a temporary work right. in Beijing. Uh, during the Olympic times, if they still live in Beijing, you know, the housing, the price for the housing for the rent is very high. They couldn't afford it, and I don't think there is much need for them to stay there. Maybe um, it's better for them to go back home with their family members to watch on TV for the Olympic Games. That's, that's very good thing. Uh, I, I no didn't hear that whether it's good or not, but you know, uh, because I'm in the communication department during that time, I know there is some, uh, you know, foreign media, they re report a lot about the immigrant workers, what will, you know, they go, uh, you know, during the Olympic Games. Actually, it's not a, a very objective, uh, I mean, it's not a very a uh, comprehensive view to report that. It's not a big problem. It, actually, it's not a problem for that. Okay, I think I can. Yeah, I just should, um, can I still ask yeah, you? Yeah, can stand up so uh, we can hear you. Um, yeah, uh, so, so far as you know, how many documentary related to Olympic Games that Chinese government did produce? Just like mm -hmm. this. And the second one, is it this movie the, the major audience? For you to produce these movies uh, to foreigners or to local Chinese? Or uh, to uh, documentary, uh, uh, there's a lot. For the movie, I think uh, only uh, one uh, for preparation, another is about the other games. Only just two, I think. But uh, also have a, a feature film. Feature okay, film. Uh, feature film yeah, okay. is about a game. Okay. Some feature film. Uh, uh, documentary only two. Well, of course, I have a lot of the opening ceremony, the closing ceremony. Um, there's a collection of highlights uh, for the Olympics, which is about four DVDs I have, all put out in China. Uh, but the other question she asked is, is the audience for this film. Is it mostly Chinese people in China, or is it mostly for foreigners? Um, Chinese people. For Chinese people. Yeah. Okay, so my question is, like, is the Vision National film, was it shown in theaters or televisions? Yeah, theater mm -hmm. and the television. Oh. Well, uh, one month. One month. So in the theaters for one month, they're nationally? Yeah. Is that what you know? 